The Oscar Piastri contract saga recently took an interesting turn when Alpine disclosed some shocking details about his contract which could indicate that McLaren is in deeper trouble than previously thought. It's not surprising that more details are beginning to emerge, especially given that the two teams are set to clash in F1's contract recognition board over the rights to the Australian Formula 2 champion. Without further ado, let's look at Alpine's unexpected reveal, what it could mean for McLaren, and how the CRB will decide who gets to sign Piastri in 2023. Alpine's Otmar Zafnauer was joined by McLaren's Andreas Seidel and Aston Martin's Mike Crack for a tasty team boss press conference at the Belgian Grand Prix on Saturday morning. The trio were involved in one of the biggest surprises of this year's silly season when Aston Martin announced Alpine's Fernando Alonso as Sebastian Vettel's 2023 replacement. A day later, Alpine announced that reserve driver Piastri would replace the Spaniard, which Piastri publicly rejected. He issued a statement on Twitter stating that Alpine issued the press release without his permission and that he will not be driving for them next year. Instead, he is expected to join McLaren. Although the team has not confirmed this, they did announce on Wednesday before the Grand Prix that Daniel Ricciardo would be leaving at the end of the season, allowing Piastri to partner Lando Norris. His fate will be decided by F1's contract recognition board, which was scheduled to meet on the Monday following the Belgian Grand Prix. When asked if he was confident that the ruling would favor his Alpine team, Zafnauer replied, Very. I have seen both sides of the argument and we are confident that Oscar signed with us back in November and there are certain things that need to be in the contract and I'm confident they're in there. However, it is believed that Alpine missed the deadline for exercising their option on Piastri, which was set to midnight on July 31st. Alpine had initially planned to bring Piastri to Williams for a year, however, after Alonso decided to announce his departure to Aston Martin on August 1st, Alpine responded the next day by naming Piastri as his replacement, but it may have been too late. If it exists, missing the deadline gives Piastri the authority to go wherever he wants, which is presumed to be McLaren. Zafnauer, on the other hand, has denied the existence of such a deadline, claiming that the contract with Piastri is in place until the end of 2023. I rarely like to talk about specifics of driver contracts, but two things I can say. One, there was no, by the 31st of July, you have to do some things or therefore you can get on. There's none of that. That 31st of July deadline that I read all the time is fictitious. It's not in the contract that he signed. And the terms of the contract? It is through 2024 with an option at the end of 23. So I'll just say those things, but there's a lot more in there. Like I said, I really don't like to talk about specifics. This is bad news for McLaren, as it no longer appears to be an open and shut case in their favor. As for Alpine's seemingly premature announcement, Zafnauer had an explanation for that as well. We informed Piastri of it before we put out the statement. He was in the simulator, so I went and found him and told him. He smiled and was thankful. Things happened very quickly, and we too reacted quickly and didn't want to go back and forth with his management, which is why we put the release out. But of course, we all know how that played out. Zafnauer previously expressed dissatisfaction with Piastri's approach to repaying a team that had invested so much time and money in his development, and has now questioned the 21-year-old's integrity. He's a promising young driver who hasn't driven in Formula 1 yet, and my wish for Oscar is that he had a bit more integrity. He signed a piece of paper as well back in November, and we've done everything on our end of the bargain to prepare him for Formula 1. His end of the bargain was to either drive for us or take a seat where we would place him for the next three years, and I just wish Oscar would have remembered what he signed in November and what he signed up to. Zafnauer's comments were put to McLaren's racing CEO, Brown, who hit back by questioning if Zafnauer was in a position to make such a comment. Ultimately, I don't know any of the details between that relationship. So I think it would be unfair to me to take a position either way because I simply don't know. But judging by recent times, the way Fernando has departed and caught Otmar by surprise, and not too long ago he is the recipient of a 400,000 euro fine and 15 points, I'm not sure he comes with the highest level of credibility and making accusations around ethics. Brown was referring to the brake duck controversy that engulfed Zafnauer's racing point team at the start of the 2020 season, when the team was discovered to have used an illegal design process. The FIA fined him €400,000 and docked him 15 points in the Constructors' Championship. Throughout the case, the team maintained its innocence, claiming that it had not illegally used information from Mercedes on its 2019 brake ducks, which its 2020 part was judged to be a copy of. Racing Point has begun the process of appealing the ruling through the FIA's International Court of Appeal in an attempt to clarify the rules and have its penalty reversed. However, after discussions with teams and clarifications from the FIA on the rules governing the use of listed and non-listed parts, Racing Point eventually withdrew its appeal. 
It's not the first time Zafnauer and Brown have had a verbal spat. During the 2020 Break Duck saga, Zafnauer claimed Brown has no idea what he's talking about and knows more about historic racing than F1. However, it appears that the battle is still squarely in the hands of the CRB. Even if Alpine wins the hearing on Monday, it appears the team is more interested in receiving compensation from McLaren than putting the Australian in the car, given that he has made no indication of wanting to race for Alpine. Zafnauer states that Alpine is still working with Piastri and that the driver is in the simulator, and that the relationship is fine, implying that he would be fine if the relationship continued into 2023 and beyond. However, because the team boss has questioned the driver's integrity, Zafnauer may be fine with it, but Piastri is unlikely to agree. He clearly wants to race for McLaren, otherwise, why would he publicly humiliate Alpine by turning down their offer? especially since he had just led his team boss to believe he was overjoyed and grateful for the 2023 race seat. That bridge appears to have been burned. Of course, the Contract Recognition Board will make the final decision as the teams are required by the Concord Agreement to abide by the CRB's decision and not pursue further legal action to change that ruling. The CRB, which was formed in the aftermath of Michael Schumacher's departure from Jordan and Benetton and Roberto Moreno's subsequent dismissal from the latter, usually operates quietly in the background, only making headlines when a high-profile dispute arises. It is mentioned in the FIA sporting regulations, but the section is actually blank, with a note stating that it is reserved for the exclusive use of FIA Formula One World Championship competitors. The exact details of how it works are enshrined in the Concord and thus not widely known, even within the F1 paddock. The CRB exists separately from the FIA. Its function is to notify the governing body of which team has a valid contract with a driver and is authorized to hold a super license on their behalf. Its primary function is to house all F1 race, reserve, and test driver contracts, or at least the key sections. Teams aren't required to submit all paperwork, as full contracts are complex and cover marketing issues, among other things. When a dispute arises, three lawyers meet to review the evidence presented by all parties. They must provide an outcome within three days of the hearing. In two of the most well-known CRB cases, the original team of a driver triumphed over the outfit attempting to poach him. That happened when David Coulthard tried to leave Williams for McLaren in 1995, and again a decade later when Jensen Button wanted to switch from BAR to Williams. Timo Glock, who has gone through the CRB process and received the desired outcome, said it was a good process. If you have problems like this, and you have a sort of a clear view from an outside lawyer or from the board who clearly has no favor, and it just goes by the legal regulation, I think that's good to have. Otherwise, you would fight forever. It's going to be interesting how they decide on Piastri and what sort of legal situation they are in. Every site has its own view. But what do you think? What will the hearing's outcome be? Will Alpine put Oscar Piastri in a seat if they win? Or will they seek compensation from another team due to their rift? If McLaren loses the case, who will take Daniel Ricciardo's place? Let us know in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. It helps us out a lot.